these right here are the rocks and you can see how big and huge and humongous they are. Walking down these rocks is one of the <laughs> craziest things. My grandfather told me that they found a hand, a hand of a human being. For them, they believe the sun and they are God. If you look at the current 1,000 Ugandan shilling note, you will see this symbol that can be traced back between 5,000 to 12,000 years ago from the oldest art rock in Uganda located in the eastern part in Kumi, a district majorly occupied by the Itasot tribe. Before the Itasot lived in this region, the shortest and now endangered tribe called the Batwa occupied these lands and this art is generally attributed to the Batwa. Today in East Africa, the Batwa are found in small groups near the Rwanda-Uganda border and Eastern Congo. However, their earlier way of life and worship is depicted in these paintings which are far from their current settlement. I'm traveling in the eastern part of Uganda and uh, fact be told this is the farthest I've come in the eastern part of Uganda and this is in uh, Bukedia and I'm going to be going up to uh, Kumi where I will be going to Nyero rock paintings. I've been told that these are the oldest art rock paintings in Uganda so I can't wait and I'm excited to see how beautiful and amazing these rock paintings are. We're in Kumi district and decided to stop over for a couple of drinks and refreshments so that we go hiking to the rock paintings with enough energy. Now today I am here and I'm going to be telling you the story of Nero rock paintings. Yeah, so first things first, when you get here, entrance for Ugandans is just 5,000 Ugandan shillings and then if you're non-Uganda tourist, you'll be able to pay 10,000 shillings. If you want to do videography or filming here, you'll need to pay 50,000 shillings. I'm Paya Zobilan, one of the tour guides here. So how long have you been guiding you as an individual? Huh. I believe it's since my childhood. Okay. Because I'm a born of here. Oh. Even the first guide here is my grandfather. Oh, really? So it is part of us. These paintings were first documented in 1913 and later described by researchers as largely of geometric nature. This type of rock art is part of a homogeneous tradition often depicted in red pigment spreading across East, Central and parts of South Africa which matches the distribution of the late Stone Age hunter gatherer culture. The paintings on this rock represent their way of life, how they move from one place to another and their worship of a higher power. So where we are here is the first cave and this cave they have attached them names like this one, you say this is Nero One. Nero One is a small rock shelter on the outer edge of the outcrop. It comprises of six concentric circles with a central image of a floral motif and a so called acacia pod shape. The geometrics in this shelter are all painted in white. The art we have here is the work of the Batwa people. So the Batwa mm. are the early man that used to stay here. Light bulb moment. The Batwa were in the eastern part of Uganda. Actually, this is something I've had for the very first time. I don't know why I'd never read this, but the Batwa people were the guys that painted here. For them, they believe the sun and their God. So what they depict here was the God that is the sun. They use the sap. You know, wild plants that have this whitish element, okay? So they say they squeezed it and they put it in certain process and at the end they came up with their own thing. So from checking out Nero 1 which was like the first uh, rock painting that we see and now we're going to Nero 2 which is uh, kind of entering into a cave you can see the pathway. Wow, wow this is really 
amazing and beautiful. Inside here, this is Nero too now, and the paintings really look awesome. Whew. Indeed, this must be a Batwa cave because the other places I've been to where the Batwa has resided are so similar to this. Nero too is the main shelter. The paintings are all done in shades of red. Cosmetic circles are the dominant form, and more than 40 different drawings can be seen on the wall of a huge rock. There's one large Akasha pot design that has also been called a canoe. On the southeastern side of the shelter, a narrow passage between the boulders leads to a small dark shelter where there is a small cavity known as the pocket. This is where the early inhabitants used to offer gifts to their gods after receiving help from them. This place showed evidence of real settlement here. This was a place that they did the excavation. Skeletons of animals and uh, and humans. So guys, after Nero 2, there is this uh, really beautiful uh, path in between rocks. And from what I'm observing, it looks like these rocks were at some point together, then one broke off from the other. So guys, look at this. I don't even think this video does it justice, but I think the area shot will give you a very good perspective of how beautiful this climb is as we're going up. A really amazing. We're now on the top of one of the rocks, the hugest rocks. This is the highest point I've been just on a rock. rocks is one of the craziest thing or most interesting thing that I've experienced here. It's kind of steep but the good thing with it is that uh, the rocks are not like soil where you fear that you'll sleep so the ground is really solid so that's why they tell you even in the Bible you should build on a rock and a firm foundation. You're right over there, that's done around right over there, it's, it's almost invisible. We're approaching uh, Nero 3, which is the third uh, rock painting, and we've had like really hike uh, through paths in the rocks and in the bushes, seen lots of monkeys here, and you know, it's a beautiful thing that you should come and try out. Now, when we walk inside there, we find only one painting and that painting is what is enhanced on the 1,000 shillings knot. If you can see right here, the same painting is reflected here. When you go outside there, this rock face has been shown. Then all of this is there, as you can see. Now they brew this one here, trying to bring yeah. it out. Eh? So guys, this right here is uh, the Nero 3, and it is the only cave with only one painting and what we're seeing here is I think one of the most popular uh, signs that we've seen about the Nero paintings and this is considered to be a place of worship and when you look at uh, the 1000 shilling knot currently in Uganda it has this particular cave it shows you the entrance into the cave and also they've enhanced this particular side of painting here to reflect on that uh, symbol on the 1000 shillings knot. The rock art sites are believed to have been sacred places of the gods so the red and white paintings remain valuable to the people of Teso. In the past, Teso people of Nero would sacrifice and pay offerings to the gods for problems of rain, misfortune, blessings and childbearing, and that is at Nero 3. As I visit more places around the country, I get to appreciate that I am learning and being exposed to so much information than I would come across in my previous life. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you soon in the next one.